Hey internet friends, in a single month, a total of four high-flying balloon-like objects have been shot down by U.S. fighter jets. A handful of trains have derailed with one of the trains carrying hazardous materials derailing in East Palestine, Ohio, blanketing the sky with a cloud of thick black smoke. Then, a plume of orange-colored gas filled the air after a truck spilled hazardous chemicals in Arizona. And now, a five-acre industrial inferno is burning in Florida, sending fumes from melted plastic into the air, bringing us to a grand total of seven ecological disasters in less than two weeks. And sure, you can excuse a few coincidences here and there, but what is happening is incredibly intentional, overt, and dangerous. Do you see it too? Something strange is happening in America, and we need to talk about it. You know how I roll. Let's lay everything out on a timeline, present the facts, point out the coincidences, and decide for ourselves what's going on. Remember, around this time last year on this channel, we were documenting all the food processing plant fires and how food production was being targeted in a very real and intentional way. Then we discussed the threat of avian flu accounts that led farmers to cull entire factories of seemingly perfectly healthy flocks, which is why we're seeing high prices at the grocery store now for a dozen eggs. Anyway, I'm just giving you context for the disaster we're seeing unfold in recent weeks. And that's without me mentioning that they shut the entire world down for two weeks to slow the spread in 2020. And that stretched into months, killing small business and really messing up shipping and production for everyone. Especially with that handy dandy Suez Canal obstruction in 2021. Do you remember that? Since the end of January, four vessels, including what was reported as a Chinese spy balloon, have been seen in U.S. and Canadian airspace. February 1st marked the sighting of the viral balloon in Reed Point, Montana. That's the moon. It's a little fuzzy out here, and it's a kind of a cruddy phone, but it's slightly overcast. Well, what the heck is that? If you remember, on February 3rd, this is when an explosion over the skies of Montana occurred, but it was memory hold and then never spoken of again. On February 4th, video shows the balloon being shot down over the Atlantic Ocean off of South Carolina. And the official narrative is that the Chinese Foreign Ministry protested the U.S. balloon downing. They said that China strongly protests the U.S. in deploying force to target civilian unmanned airships. The whole incident raised many questions like why didn't the military shoot it down as soon as it was spotted? It's incredibly demoralizing for U.S. citizens to, be, to see a perceived threat like a foreign spy balloon over their house and watch the government do absolutely nothing about it. The news seemed to strike up more talk of tension and war with China, even though China has all of our production contracts, so it wouldn't necessarily be a smart move on either side to enter into a war with each other since the United States doesn't produce or manufacture anything, really, and China would lose out financially on these contracts, but I digress. I'm just telling you why, in my humble opinion, it's a psyop from every angle. The other angle is the UFO angle, which you can have UFOs without aliens, you know? UFOs are just unidentified flying objects, which many militaries have. But all this discussion of the U.S. shooting down full fleets of alien UFOs has prompted renewed interest in NASA's Project Bluebeam, or the theory that the government will use advanced technology to fake an alien invasion to control and manipulate the population. Through Project Bluebeam, the government would use holographic images projected into the sky, sounds, and special effects to simulate an alien invasion. Subliminal messages and hypnosis would also be deployed to control people's thoughts and emotions. This is where I land on another question. Have we been psyoped into believing absolutely everything is fake? That's what I took away from it today. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Lock your doors tonight. Lock your doors tonight. On February 10th, another object was shot down off of Dead Horse, Alaska. Again, no specific detail given besides that it was the size of a small car flying at an altitude that posed a threat to air traffic. Then on February 11th, something was shot down over the Yukon. On February 12th, another object was shot down over Michigan. While all of this UFO target practice was happening, on February 3rd, a freight train carrying extremely hazardous chemicals derailed along Norfolk Southern's railway in East Palestine, Ohio. Palestines worldwide just can't catch a break, can they? 
State officials asked emergency responders to burn the leak, releasing these toxic chemicals into the air. One of these chemicals, phosgene, was a weapon in the world wars. People within a one mile radius were evacuated, but we all know by now that that wasn't enough. Visuals from the area make it look like a nuke went off. I mean, a train carrying what might have been the worst chemical cargo ever was derailed under suspicious circumstances. And then they blew up every single car carrying that substance, right in the middle of the best farmland in the country. Wow. Look at all that. Look at it. It's all in the bottom of the creek. Hey guys, so I'm here at Leslie Run and there's dead worms and dead fish all throughout this water. So, something I just discovered is that if you scrape the creek bed, it's like chemical is coming out of the ground. Can, can you show, can you come here? And, and, and let me just show this to people. I don't know if you're gonna see this on the camera, but watch this. Just see that chemical pop out of the creek. This is disgusting. Right now, as we speak, these chemicals are seeping into the Ohio River, which supplies 10% of the United States drinking water, affecting 30 million citizens. But don't worry, Bill Gates, who was almost as lucky as Larry Silverstein with his timing, became the largest shareholder of Ecolab, Ecolab, a water treatment, hygiene, and infection prevention company the shares of which he purchased in 2022. So no doubt Devil Bill will profit from this disaster too. Even though government officials have insisted the water in the area is safe to drink, I really wouldn't if I were you. Videos have emerged showcasing quite the contrary and pets, fish, birds, even outside the blast zone are dying. A class action lawsuit has alleged that East Palestine residents may already be undergoing DNA mutations. Though if I had to guess, the DNA mutations are probably from the COVID shots, but inhaling all the toxic fumes sure doesn't help. The Norfolk Southern company worth $55 billion, who is primarily owned by the Vanguard Group, JP Morgan and BlackRock, has offered $25,000 in assistance. There are 5,000 residents in East Palestine, and I'm no mathematician here, but that comes out to a whopping $5 per resident affected. It should also be noted that rail unions were striking months ago because they were overworked and understaffed. But Norfolk Southern did nothing to improve working conditions. Was all of this in East Palestine organic or just happenstance? The 2021 film White Noise was shot in East Palestine. The film is about a train that crashes and explodes with toxic fumes and the town has to be evacuated. What are the chances that the script was already written for us back in 2021? The media wants you to know that we have over a thousand train derailments per year, so pay no attention. And there has not been a single peep from Greta, not a single peep from Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates, or those who claim to care so much about the environment. Since East Palestine, four other trains have derailed which were carrying hazardous chemicals, but the consequences, they weren't quite up there with East Palestine. On February 14th, after a hazardous truck spill of liquid nitric acid in Tucson, Arizona, authorities closed down the entire interstate and forced evacuation. Now, Florida residents are worried about breathing in the air after a five-acre plant nursery caught fire, sending up flames and toxins from the plastic plant containers, which occurred on February 16th. It's almost like we're seeing the demolition of the United States play out before us. We're watching our food and water supply be attacked, our infrastructure, our freedoms and liberties disappear one right after the other. There have been direct attacks on the family unit, our financial system, the military, everything. It's undeniable at this point. And the last month, even though, even through all these happenings, it's just an incredibly narrow view in the whole scheme. We've been under attack in every way for a while now, but what do we do about it? Short term, personally, I. I'd first not panic, but make sure you have the supplies and water you need to weather this storm. Because it certainly seems like it's ramping up, which makes sense when you think about it because the criminals who inflicted the medical tyranny and widespread death, suffering, and deceit on all of us, well, they were never going to take the fall for it. They would rather burn everything down to the ground than be held liable. In doing so, serves the shadowy plot to completely destroy our constitutional republic and shift the balance in favor at, of a one world government. Nations without borders. Just like they told us they were going to do with Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, and the Great Reset.
What do you think, Internet friends? You know, I always look forward to reading your comments. Apologies for my absence. I'm currently working on releasing my first book next month, so please subscribe to my newsletter so I can tell you when it comes out. You're going to want to read it. As always, thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel on Patreon. Bye.